Hello, today's video is going to be a comparison of a lot of USB-C power cables. Too many, really. So in this video, I'm gonna do a bit of explanation of the process, show testing a cable, and then dive into some of the data. This data is all on my webpage too, if you wanna pursue at your own speed. Wires have something called resistance, and in general, the smaller the wire, the higher the resistance. More resistance means you have more wasted power, which means your devices charge slower, and generate more waste in the form of heat. Within this video, I'm gonna check each USB cable for charging performance. Although I've never seen a USB cable advertise its resistance, it is the most important metric. We are comparing entire cable units, so the connector and cable are included. There are a lot of different styles, so in this video, there's a bit of a mix. Mostly USB A to C, and some are also USB 2 data transfer, while others have USB 3.1 data transfer. Those extra pins on the USB A style connector. There are tons of cables on the market, and this is part two of the video series. This video will cover 38 additional various USB cables, and links will be down in the description as usual. In addition, I'm also making use of my webpage, where there'll be a PDF of all the data from round one and two, so you can do your own analysis. The purpose of the video is to figure out which cable is going to do the best job of charging your device. The main metric for determining charging efficiency is wire resistance. The lower the resistance, the better the efficiency of the cable. I have set up a test jig to get a precise resistance measurement of each cable using my Siglent electronic load and a DC power supply. I added a USB-A socket to cover more cables. I also added a switch to change between the positive and negative wire within each USB cable. The diagram shows the detail of how things are wired. The voltage must be sensed in different wires than where the current flows in a loop. The switch facilitates in swapping wires as needed. So let's look at one cable through the process. Here's the cable setup in our resistance measurement apparatus. The resistance is checked on both the positive and negative leads of the cable, and these values are added together for the total resistance of the cable. This cable measured 54 milliohms on the positive conductor, and 48 milliohms on the negative conductor for a total resistance of 102 milliohms. If we do some basic math, we can find that the power loss of this cable is therefore about 2.6 watts when being used at its full 100 watt charging capability. We can calculate the loss at other charge levels absolutely, but 100 watts is the worst case. What we care about most is that 102 milliohm value though. In the process of testing, I noticed one cable acted a bit more like a piece of heater wire than a cable, so I decided to pull out the thermal camera for this one this one's getting warm. This is not the cable to use. Thankfully, they don't sell this one anymore. So here it is, all in one chart. This is hard to look at. So I'm gonna try and break this down into individual charts around the length of the general cable. But again, this is on the website. There's some conditional formatting on the data to help identify strong and weak performers. Look for green. One of the requests was for a column of normalized resistance per foot as well. So this has been added in too. All right, so first things first, we have the 10 foot cables here, and we noticed that the anchor 10 foot cable from previous round did pretty good. The Volutes cables are basically all in the same category. There's a JS aux cable that kind of, it didn't do as good. It's a USB-C to C cable and quite a bit cheaper, but it's also quite a bit worse. And then there's one cable that was really cheap and it's terrible. So this uh, Kung Fa Blue cable, did really bad. So that's definitely one to avoid. Moving on to the six foot length cables. We can see that the Uni cable didn't do too bad. We can see that the overall winner though is the Satoshi cable, which is a C to C USB cable. Overall on the expense side though, of course the winning cable is also the most expensive cable, but I guess you get what you pay for. Again, there's one of those Kung Fa blue cables which is the worst performer by far. Moving on to the three foot cables. We can see that the Zixis cable still came out on top. There's one of these cables, this McMo McDodo, McDodo cable, and this one has a power meter in the cable. So it's really expensive, but it has that unique feature. And, and overall, the actual resistance of the cable was, was not bad. Some not so great cables mixed in here. The JS Aux actually did very poor in this category, even worse than the Kung Fa Blue cable. And now the largest category, the short cables, the 1.5 foot and under. And these are kind of all over the place. So there were these two cables here that were kind of expensive and did very poor. My own homemade cable, the All Things One Place cable, of course is a very solid performer. The cable creation is a one foot cable with all the things in it. So for the cost, you get a, a very strong performing cable and it's in the middle for, for cost per foot. So you know, depends on what you're looking for there. The Volutes was the best, but this is, remember, is an A to C cable, so this doesn't have the chip in it. But the Satoshi is uh, a great performer. So if you're looking for, you know, solid cable, that one's among the lowest resistance. And also this cable creation down here. You can see the difference between these two. So you have the cable creation with the extra stuff. So Thunderbolt 3 and 
high speed data and everything and you can see that that cable had a little higher resistance and then we look at the cable creation without those things and you can see that it's a little bit lower resistance but it doesn't have the extra data it's also a little shorter and just for fun here's all the data on a graph it's a lot to look at but at least it shows where the outliers are we can see that heater cable of a USB cable is way out and we can see that the cluster of short good cables on the other end. So the winners for the 10 foot category are the Volutes and the Anchor. The winners for the six foot category are the Uni and the Sateshi. The winners for the three foot category are the Zixus and the Basius. Finally, the winners for the one foot category are the Sateshi, Cable Creations, and Anchor. So that's about it for the charging efficiency of 48 total USB cables. And that should answer the question that yes, the cable matters and some cheaper cables may even be dangerous. If one of these looks like it will do the trick for you, check out the links in the description. Well, some of them. The rest are on the website. If you have suggestions for more, let me know in the comments. As usual, thank you very much for watching and sticking around to the end of the video. If you really like this one, please hit the subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. Thanks again, and bye.